Welcome, friends. Thanks for tuning in. I am Pastor Nadine schrader Krantz, and you are in the right place for shared worship between St. Peter's Zurich, St. Peter's Broadhagen, and Trinity London, and Trinity Windsor. My colleagues and I, uh, that's Pastors Laura, Mike, and Steve, have the unique opportunity and gift of collaborating in this new way, which you've experienced a few times already. It reflects our individual congregations, our Thames ministry area, the Eastern Synod, and the entire Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada. Together, we are united in Christ in name and in worship. Today, the sermon is provided by Reverend Prima Samuel, assistant to the Bishop Synod bishop in the Synod of Alberta and the Territories. Today I serve as your primary worship leader. Trinity Windsor reads scripture. St. Peter's Broadhagen provides the music for today's hymns. And London provides Pastor Steve very capable editing skills. Thank you to all. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. I invite you to join me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. O oh God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. They came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. 
When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Blessed greetings to you, dear brothers and sisters. On this eighth Sunday after Pentecost, hearing the Gospel according to Mark, and preparing for this sermon, I want to confess that I am feeling hot, sticky, and tired. It is about 34 degrees, and I have a whole week of this ahead. How I feel this dry, hot day reflects how I have felt the past number of months. I turn to Facebook for some escape because I usually enjoy pictures of people's camping trips on the lake, the flower gardens, beautiful baby pictures, and family events. But what I found there was populated throughout social media and the news stories of the great injustices. The injustices perpetrated on our Muslim brothers and sisters the horrors of the residential schools that have been coming to light these days. These issues, along with concerns of climate change, gender inequality, and many such more, are of great importance. But for just a few blessed minutes, I want to find an escape from all that needs to be done, all that needs to be challenged to voice, just to find that peace. Quickly enough, that quest for positivity becomes swallowed up by the darkness I was hoping to avoid for a few precious minutes. When I check out the news feeds from my family and friends in India, I find the same thing waiting for me. The grim realities of COVID as my country of birth faces levels of death and trauma due to the virus, which some have referred to as genocidal in nature. Of course, that doesn't even take into consideration the migrant workers seeking work or refuge or find a way home. The numerous atrocities towards women and young children, students, so on. I feel helpless knowing that I am half a world away and can do nothing to help. All I can do is pray and hope that God will see my family and my country through this horrible time, and I worry. The COVID realities here in Canada are fraught with uncertainty. The province I am currently living in is set to open on July 1st, and many await it with anxiety. It will be wonderful to see everyone again, to do the many things we have put on hold. And through that anxious joy, there is that worry, worry that this might perpetrate another wave. We do not want to go through any more lockdowns, but we certainly don't want to see any more loss of life either. Needless to say, I am exhausted. Deep in my bones, deep in my soul, and I know that I echo the sentiment shared by many. We are exhausted. In our gospel, Mark, tells us of the disciples returning to Jesus from their missionary work, all excited by what, by what they have done and taught, the many things. That excitement reminds me of the day when my grade one child returned from a hot field trip day to the zoo. 
he was so excited to tell me all about his day, all about what he saw, what he did with his friends. Then he did not even give any thought to the heat of the day and that he had been walking throughout or most of it and possibly very tired. As a mother, my first thought was, did you eat your lunch? Did you get enough to drink throughout the day? Did you drink your water? I wanted to ensure that he was well and cared for. In our gospel, responding to the disciples, Jesus recognizes them and offers them the invitation for rest and nourishment. They are invited to eat and rest, knowing that soon enough they will need to be out and about again, healing, teaching, and proclaiming. But for right now, rest is far more important. Without it, they will not be able to do what they have been called to do. How many times over the past many months have you rested? When I say rested, I mean truly rested. The soul rest that leaves you nourished and feeling alive. The soul rest that is so needed after the soul work, the spirit's work that comes out of passion and love, out of compassion for speaking and doing, for proclaiming the gospel. This soul rest has certainly been a challenging one for me throughout this time of COVID along with negotiating the world we live in, to negotiate education for my children, care for my families, ensure that the call I have been invited to serve is done well, to worry about loved one's health and well-being, not even to mention the exhaustion from weeping for and with our indigenous siblings for climate change, challenging discrimination against persons of color and disabilities, against the many oppressions, injustices, hurts. This is soul work, my friends. And this soul work is exhausting. It needs the soul nourishment, the soul rest. But these days, there isn't time for soul rests and taking the kind of nourishment that brings fullness to the soul. I'm sure that, like me, you have had to make do with the driblets of rest, most of which feel like catnaps, when what we need is the long, real soul rest. When Jesus offers his disciples this rest, there is a part of me that wants to call out, me too, please. I need that food. I need that rest too. It sounds so wonderful to rest, to be in the presence of Jesus. Perhaps that sentiment was shared by the others outside of the disciples, for they came running. They recognized them and they came running. They were seeking something. Perhaps it was the healing or the wholeness, or perhaps it was just standing in the presence of Jesus. In seeing them running eagerly, he has compassion. He goes out to them in that compassion. And as the disciples rest, Jesus continues that soul work of teaching and healing. Many like the Syrophoenician woman from our reading on June 27th are content just to touch Jesus's fringe. 
in that moment, that moment, they find the rest, the love, the wholeness that they need. We don't know all of what they have been facing, but it was likely not easy. The Romans, the Judeans, elites would have made life difficult for them, but in Jesus, they found life. And it was enough just to touch the fringe of his cloak for that life. It was enough for them to find the healing they needed so that they could just keep moving, just keep living. In this moment of our history, we need that rest in Jesus. We echo the needs of the disciples. We echo the needs of those who came running, those who were brought to Jesus. Whether we are trying to help negotiate the church through this unprecedented time, or whether we are trying to hold on, just hold on, our very being cries for relief, for hope. We are crying out for our God. And as Christ does, he comes to us in compassion. He comes to us offering that peace, that rest. Christ gathers us in and bids us to rest, to put those burdens down just for now. That is not to say that we are no longer needed in the world. Soon enough, we do need to set off once again and be agents of Christ's love in the world. We also need to rest, to be renewed, to be those agents, to be nourished, to find succor for our souls. We need to find that healing and peace that only Christ can give, or we risk being taken down by the very cares we are trying to address. And mind you, as he did, as Christ did, as Jesus did that day, while the disciples rested, continued to heal, touch, nourish, and care. In our need, Christ comes to offer us the food, the rest, knowing that we will go back out into the world. And in these moments when we rest, knowing that Christ continues that soul work of healing and teaching. We rest in Christ to be strengthened, to get back to where Christ is, already speaking, to speak and give voice along, already challenging to challenge along, already healing to heal along, to teach, to nurture, to nourish, and compassion all alongside of Christ in that compassion. Alongside of God to go and do the soul work. We are needed to be the hands, the hearts, the ears, voice, eyes of Christ. But for now, Knowing Christ continues that sole work of compassion, we are invited to rest, to renew, so that we may go out with that renewed strength to clearly see, to clearly do with refreshed hearts, to passionately love and challenged, with revived hope to heal and to forgive. Christ grants us that peace, restores our hope, helps us to see again that we, you and I, my friends, are valued and loved 
always so that in turn we may value and love God's children. To this God who in challenging and calling us to be the missionaries of justice, missionaries of healing, missionaries of peace, invites and reminds us of the peace, the healing, the rest bringing wholeness to us as well always giving glory to this God. May we join together and say, Amen. Thanks be to God. be with you always. Please accept my virtual hugs and greet anyone who is worshiping with you uh, in person with a, a sign of peace. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation, saying, Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Tend to your church, O God. Encourage bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders in their proclamation of the gospel. Raise up new leaders and encourage those pursuing a call to ministry. Embolden all the baptized to embody your love and justice. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Restore your creation, O God. Sustain croplands and pastures and safeguard all farm animals and livestock. Preserve lakes, rivers, and streams that offer refreshment. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters and protect coastlines threatened by rising oceans. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Reconcile the nations, O God. Break down the dividing walls that make us strangers to one another and unite us as one human family. Equip leaders to deal wisely with conflict and guide diplomats who seek peaceful solutions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heal your people, O God. Look with compassion on immigrants exiles, and all who are afraid or feel lost. Give rest to those who are weary, comfort to those who are grieving, and recovery to those who are ill, and those we name in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Nourish our congregations, O God. Prepare a table where we receive food for our hungering spirits. Renew our commitment to provide for one another and revitalize our ministries of feeding and nurturing hungry neighbors. 
Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You lead us home, O God. We give thanks for all who have died, now citizens with the saints. As you have received them into your heavenly home, so welcome all of us to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. See you.